Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, gunfire at a Louisville protest takes a man's life. Our U.S. Senate primary remains undecided. And will True Blue fans be allowed at U.K. football games this fall? All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome to Hey, Kentucky. After a week-long hiatus for all of us, LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer is back with me tonight. Keith, I hope you had a good week off. A uh, good chance to rest, relax, and now we get a chance to talk more topics. That's right. Here we go. Let's start with this one. The ongoing protests in Louisville, which made headlines during our week off. The latest development involves a murder charge filed against the man accused of firing in a crowd of people at Jefferson Square Park on Saturday, where protesters had gathered in the Breonna Taylor case. Police say 23-year-old Stephen Lopez had been arrested more than once during the protests over the past month. The gunfire killed Tyler Girth. The 27-year-old photographer had been using the power of social media to elevate the voices of those calling for justice. A vigil was held in his honor last night where friends and family say they hope his death will be a catalyst for peace in the city. And I mean, he should be here tonight, you know, doing his passion like he has been. He supported the cause. He was saw the injustices with Brianna and some of the injustice throughout the world. Brianna Taylor case also brought hundreds of people to rally in the Kentucky Capitol last Thursday. Celebrities like Common, Jada Pinkett Smith and Rhapsody were among those who stood alongside Taylor's family and attorneys. Uh, Keith, just it's an awful, awful way to uh, for these protests to turn violent and in fact deadly. I mean, how many times have we talked in the last couple of weeks about finding your voice, finding your way to do something to help out the cause? And we found a photographer here who was doing his part, giving a voice to people through his lens and doing nothing of harm. And now has gone way, way, way too soon. Oh, it's just, it's heart wrenching. All right, Kentucky may have held an election while we were gone, but the biggest race is yet to be decided because of the pandemic. We expect to find out the results of the U.S. Senate race in the Democratic primary tomorrow, one week after the election. Of course, the coronavirus upended the process, delaying the primary by two months and prompting massive absentee voting based on in person voting. Charles Booker led Amy McGrath at last word, 44 to 40 percent, but Keith, there's so many absentee ballots. Uh, I know we're trying to keep track, but it'll be tomorrow before we know exactly what happened. I mean, it's going to be a close call, and we knew it was going to be uh, ever since um, maybe the last, what, three weeks uh, when it seems like Charles Booker really made his push. And so it's going to be interesting to see uh, how, you know, we waited up on hanging chads, so now let's wait on some absentee ballots. <laughs> that's, that's right. Hanging chads. Wow. Good reference there, my friend. All right, now look at the latest on the coronavirus in Kentucky. Governor Bashir continues to take heat from other state leaders over his handling of the crisis. Republicans are hammering him over the unemployment delays. And Ag Commissioner Ryan Quarles has announced that he's joining the owners of a Scott County farm in suing Bashir over the restrictions. The farm manager says the outdoor facility with a capacity to host about 2,600 people was denied a request to reopen to just a fraction of that on June 8th. 1% capacity would be 100 people. And I mean, and outdoor attractions don't even have it. That's following indoor facility rules. And even indoor gyms can have a family per six square feet. And we can't even have that. We only have 10 people. Meanwhile, another round of reopenings comes today across the state. That included public pools, event venues, and even some nursing homes. And Keith, I do, I feel for this orchard because it, it is all outdoors. You want to be able to um, keep your business going. And if you've been there before, there is sometimes a line. It can be long. You can be cramped in together in certain areas. But this is a really big farm, and, and I, I just don't understand how we're going to let, what is it, 50 people into a bar in a, a downtown setting and not let people outside, you know, where they can be six feet apart. I, it doesn't make sense to me either. Yeah, and they certainly weren't asking for 2,600 people to be there, like just a fraction nope. of that. So, All right, last week, mm -hmm. Governor Bashir's administration unveiled its Healthy at School guidelines for the fall. 
Safety expectations at schools and universities throughout Kentucky include physical distancing, wearing a mask, and health screenings. The state is giving districts flexibility to resume classes as they see fit. Some districts may choose to only have online classes or have staggered schedules. While the governor has said guidelines may continue to change before the school year begins, many parents are starting to weigh the risk factors involved with sending their kids back to school. The mother of one six-year-old says her daughter was excited to start first grade, but now she's considering homeschooling. The kids, I feel like they're going to get anxiety and depression from all this just because, you know, this is going to be a completely different atmosphere for them. And it's not going to be, I feel, a positive one. You know, the learning and stuff is fun and doing, you know, all the activities and stuff, but being apart and not doing it together is going to be really hard for them, I feel. One pediatrician says parents should consult their doctor if they are concerned about their child wearing a mask. And of course, if that child has reasons they can't, I'm sure schools would be flexible on that. But Keith, there is a big difference between NTI and homeschooling. Uh, you've got to come up with the curriculum. You've got to, I, I mean, it's just different. Oh, for sure. I mean, you, you know, you're just helping out with mm -hmm. some homework when it's NTI, you know, you're having to come up with everything when you're homeschooling and you got to stay by their restrictions as well. And, and so, you know, I, I realize all kids learn differently, but I hadn't thought about the young kids and how this mom stated it, you know, being, you know, so difficult on a young age and, and having to do in and out of school masks and everything. It could be tough on the younger kids. My, my daughter barely missed the cutoff to start kindergarten this fall. She will start next year and I'm so thankful, so thankful. All right, turning to sports, the waiting game continues to determine the fate of college football in the fall. Today, UK Athletic Director Mitch Barnhart said the decision on whether or not fans will be allowed in has yet to be made as everyone waits to see what the virus will do in the coming weeks. Barnhart said that as the calendar counts down to July and August, the university's focus is shifting from return to activities to return to play. But last week, sources said the door may have already been closed on tailgating ahead of games and and Keith I just I'm not even sure how they're testing all the athletes let alone how would they get crowds in there yeah I, I you know and I would imagine they're going to be taking the temperatures with those guns and everything before you're even allowed in but you know I'll give up some tailgating in order just to have some football mm -hmm. and be able to go watch the game that we all love uh, you know we'll see where this goes from here, it, it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a hundred percent sure how he sounded and how he felt one way or the other. Yeah. And I don't think you can right now because states are seeing spikes. Mm. I mean, we don't, we don't know if what lies ahead. All right now in Hey Kentucky, in case you missed it, a review of recent headlines. The effort to address unemployment claim problems continues. Today, more in-person application sites were set to open including locations in Frankfurt, Ashland, and Owensboro. State officials say the number of unresolved cases since the pandemic began now stand at 6,700 from March, 25,000 from April, and 17,000 from May. And Lexington leaders have agreed to allow the organization that oversees the Convention Center and Rupp Arena to refinance so it can make payments on loans for an ongoing $275 million expansion. Up next on Hey Kentucky, we'll revisit last week's primary. UK political expert Dr. Stephen Voss will talk with me about the undecided U.S. Senate race, other developments from a most unusual election process. Stay with us.